I've been the COO of the Richard Harris uh, law firm for the past 13 and a half years. Um, so it's definitely um, a fun gig. The consulting um, side of it just morphed in, you know, how do I pay it forward to all of the folks that helped me um, manage to learn all the things I needed to learn to, you know, run our firm as it was continuing to grow. So, um, you know, obviously I'm running my firm and finding new ways to innovate um, and then working with uh, growing firms on ways that they can bring tech into their firms. I think a lot of what I do is gravitated towards the tech side um, because as we all know, um, tech is becoming more and more, whether that's through client portals, uh, new CRM systems, AI coming onto the scene. Um, I think it's important to, to, you know, take a step back and figure out, you know, how does it work for each one of our firms and, and, you know, we all want the same outcomes, but how we put it into our firms is a little bit different, you know, based on size and, and practice area. Evolving the ways that our, our clients can communicate with us, right? So, you know, I always use the analogy with our team is, you know, you used to go into the bank every day, right? And I know it's a very simplistic analogy, but none of us go into the bank anymore. And so finding ways to, to think about the times of the day, right? So if you're like, hey, did I pay that bill? What's my balance? You're generally not thinking about that in the busy, busyness of the day you're thinking about it at 10 o'clock at night. And so our clients are doing the same thing about their case, right? They're home from the day. It's, you know, they've gotten dinner done and kids off to bed and they think, oh my gosh, what's going on with my case? And so I think it's just opening it up to finding more ways for us to get information to our clients and to keep them informed. Um, and, you know, we've always tried to be forward thinking of, you know, yes, we have the telephone. Yes, we have texting. Yes, we have email. But what is it going to look like tomorrow? Because I think it's ever evolving. And I think the firms that aren't thinking about that evolution are going to get left behind by the firms that have more ways to just get in front of their clients. But I think, you know, when you look at tech versus ops, right? You take George and I, for example. Um, I've never built software and he's never run a law firm, but together we can do great things, right? Jose is the same way. Like he can tell me all the things that case status can do, but he can't tell me how I run my practice. So through creating partnerships, I think that's where the rubber kind of really meets the road is, hey, this is the outcome I want. How do we need to get there? And then ops and tech kind of, you know, find that that middle ground or what's going to work best for that particular firm. And so I think that's really from the consultant side of it is sitting down with firms and saying, okay, you, you want a client portal, you know, what are you wanting to get out of this, right? What is your expectation? What are you wanting to provide to your clients and tell me how your firm operates and then working side by side with the, the tech is saying like, okay, you know, how are we going to make this work so that it, you know, really grows legs and, and because we can put tech in our office, but we can't make it valuable yeah. and work correctly without those pieces. But again, you know, for those on the call that are looking at case status, I know we're coming short on time, but I just want to talk about, you know, the, the insight you have real time to when a case isn't going good. So Jose touched on that MPS score. So a review comes in and, and ours through automations, right? Um, when an MP, a new MPS score comes in, there's a notification and we can see, I'm just looking at mine today, grateful for your help. Thank you so much. Um, professional and always extremely communicative. Um, so far, everyone has been kind and considerate Everyone's there. Um, and we have a dedicated client experience specialist that lives in this space. And so, you know, it, it also allows us to get out in front of a client that may not be happy, Oof. but we aren't aware of it. So it gives us an avenue to get somebody in front of that. So the MPS has been huge for us, right? Keeping the clients informed was a great thing, right? It's a great communication tool, but it is also bi-directionally a great insight for us to see where we might be doing something wrong, right? Or, hey, we're getting lower MPS scores in stage three. What's happening in stage three? So we're not this isn't just a client's tool. This is also our tool to help 
better fine tune our processes. So I'm always trying to, you know, systematize everything in my firm. Um, I think that's a huge deal. Um, but I, 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 I think it's of great value. And uh, one of the other things I think um, Jose touched on that is huge is our old portal lived outside. So they had to log into the portal. They had to log into Litify. They had to do this here. They had to do that there. The fact that for my team, it feels native. It, they're just in Litify makes a humongous difference. So that integration really, really does help, um, you know, keep my my team engaged. But again, you got to be ready for it. You got to have a team of people. And, you know, I agree with George. It makes it easier if you have a very, very strong executive team. But I guarantee you, even if you don't have a Melissa, there's somebody in your firm that digs this. And you got to find the champion of the the product that you're putting in right whether it's a portal a texting a litify you got to find somebody that loves it as much as you want everyone else to love it because that's where the buy-in really truly comes from so 